Welcome to the lion's den. Uh, I'm going to piggyback on Sheree and do what she did. Uh, I'm going to do a video recording of this and hope it all works out good. Uh, before we start, let's pray. Almighty God, Jehovah, I thank you for this day, this beautiful day. I pray that you guide my words, my thoughts, and my actions as I present your word. Send the Holy Spirit to minister to me and to guide my tongue. I thank you, and I pray this in the name of your Son, who is Yeshua. Amen. All right, this is take two. Okay, we're, uh, we're in chapter eight, the seventh seal. Chapter eight uh, starts by the final seal, the seventh seal, being taken off of the scroll. So, let me preface this with uh, saying that some people say that the seven seals, the seven trumpets, the seven bowl judgments are all the same thing, just repeated. Well, I disagree. Uh, they are, I think they are all three sets of seven. The 21 different events are different events. They're not a retelling of each seven. So, uh, if you look into this and, and you read their arguments, uh, you'll see that their arguments are pretty poor and they're weak. So, uh, I urge you to do your own due diligence on this. So, the seventh seal, verse 1, chapter 8. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. There was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. Now I've heard some people say that this is clear evidence that there are no women in heaven. I think it was meant as a joke. I think it's a terrible, terrible joke. And I would never repeat that more than once or twice. Verse 2, And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Okay, so the seventh seal is opened, and there's silence in heaven by the space of half an hour. I think, now that the scroll is completely open, there is, everyone around the throne is in anticipation of what to what is to come. The deed to the earth is completely open, the Lamb owns it, and something is fixing to occur. Now, the seven angels which stood before God were given seven trumpets. Okay, some people say that these, once again, these are symbolic trumpets. I, they are not symbolic because later on the angels blow them. So they're not blowing symbolic trumpets. They are blowing actual physical trumpets given to them. Verse 3 says, Another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. A golden censer. A metal censer is a pot used for burning incense. You've seen the priest walk down the aisle with a pot on a chain, swinging it back and forth, and smoke billowing out. Uh, I tend to think that this is a stationary censer. It's it's made for a, a, to be permanent. and uh, But now they've given it to him. And he's offering it, the smoke from it, with the prayers of the saints before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, this is verse 4, And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. Well, these saints, who are they? They are the same saints that they talked about in chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. They came out of the tribulation. That reads, And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I, meaning John, said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of the great tribulation. So these are all the saints that's come out of the great tribulation. They're offering, the angel is offering their prayers and the smoke of this incense up before God. Well, what are their prayers? It doesn't say what their prayers are. It gives us a hint as to what their prayers are. So, if I had went through the tribulation and was beheaded or killed uh, for the testimony of Yeshua, Jesus Christ, uh, you might think if we were in our old earthly spirits that we want vengeance. So, let's look back and see what they were doing and maybe he, we can figure out what their, their prayers are. In chapter 7, it says that they serve Jehovah day and night. They're not hungry, they're not thirsty, and their tears are wiped away 
by Yehovah. It doesn't sound to me like they have vengeance in their hearts. It sounds to me like they have gratitude, thankfulness, reverence before God and praise. It's their praise to Yehovah that's in those prayers that are offered up to him, not vengeance for the people on earth. I think it's a shadow of what we're supposed to be like. Even though we suffer greatly at some other people's hands sometimes or through our own circumstances, uh, vengeance should not be ours. And we should always remember to leave it in God's hands. Let him take care of it and offer him only our love and praise. <coughs> Excuse me. Verse 5. And the angel took the censer and filled it with the fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. Okay. The angel has this sensor, this big stationary sensor, and he's cast it to the earth and it's full of fire from the altar. And there are voices, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. I've already told you what a sensor is. But it says there were voices, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. Not a great earthquake, just an earthquake. It talks about the great earthquake later. So the only non-natural sound there between thunderings, lightning, earthquake, and voices. What are these voices he talks about? Are they the voices of those that are affected by this thing being cast to earth? Are they the voices uh, from or in heaven about what's going on? It doesn't say. But there's a, a, a gentleman that we watch on YouTube regularly. Uh, he's 70, 75 years old. He's, he led a fairly successful business life, uh, guiding some companies through some government contracts on uh, uh, military equipment, uh, most notably the electronics, some of the electronic systems that's on the FAA 18 for the Navy. But he says that there, every word in Scripture is there for a reason. If you run across one that you don't understand, you better pay heed and look into it and find out what it is. So. That's up to y'all. You need to see what these voices are. You need to report back and post what you find on the lion's den. Verse 6. And the seven angels, which had the seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. So here we go. Let me scroll. The first angel sounded, and there followed hell and fire mingled with blood. And they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of trees was burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. Hail and fire mingle with blood. Now, we've already seen hail and fire once, back in Exodus 9, remember? Moses stretched forth his rod toward heaven, and the Lord sent thunder and hail, and the fire ran along the ground, and the Lord rained hail upon the land of Egypt. So, we have hail and fire right there. But what is the, what is the blood? I'm not sure. Is it symbolic of the death that, that the, uh, the hail and the fire brings? Is it actual blood? Uh, there is a precedent, like I said, in Exodus for hail and fire, but not blood that I can remember. So if someone else comes across that and, and has an answer, uh, please post it. So Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed by fire and hail, if you remember correctly. Uh, there's been some some discoveries made in Israel, and, and I urge you to research this yourself, about Sodom and Gomorrah uh, being found and sulfur balls being found embedded in the stone that the city was once made of. Now, this some of it is, it hit, it burned, and it encapsulated itself, so it extinguished itself. So some of it can be recovered and still set ablaze, and it burns at such a high temperature, it'll actually turn rock to a very hard ash. So uh, that's something else for you to look into. The second angel sounded, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood, and the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. Most interpretations of this scripture say, uh, because it speaks of a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, I think it's an asteroid or a comet, and I've always thought that too, but when I was researching this, uh, uh, it just came to me. I didn't read it anywhere, but it, 
could also be a volcano close to the coast that explodes and, and blows into the sea, like uh, such as Mount St. Helens did. Uh, it would be a great mountain burning with fire cast into the sea. If you know, about a third of Mount St. Helens blew out into the atmosphere. So that could, uh, that could also be what it is. Uh, now it says it is burning with fire was cast into the sea. Well, uh, the word sea uh, used there was uh, thalassa, which is a uh, Strong's 2281. Both terms for a very large ocean or a very small sea. So there's no clarity there on, on which particular sea it could be. It could be any large body of water on the earth. Uh, now this blood, uh, it became blood, they say. Now, is this a chemical reaction because of what goes into the water or is it a actual blood? Once again, don't know. It does say that one third of the creatures were destroyed and one third of the ships. Of that, uh, there's no no question or no ambiguity to it. So the only part of this that we're unsure of is what the Great Mountain is is cast into the sea, and is it real blood or is it you know uh, some kind of chemical reaction? Whatever it was, evidently the fish don't like it. Verse 10, And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers, and upon the fountains of water. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. And many men died of the waters, because they were made bitter. Okay, it says, uh, A great star fell from heaven, burning as it were a lamp or torch. The word uh, absinthos uh, means Wormwood. And it means a bitter plant. Uh, when it says the a third part of the waters became wormwood, uh, the waters it's talking about are the rivers, a third part of the rivers, and upon the fountains of water. The fountains, the word they use for fountains there is piggy, 4077 in your strongs. It means source or supply. So that could be either the headwaters of the rivers. It could be the groundwater. Maybe this thing penetrates and contaminates our groundwater. Whatever it is, it's the source. And one-third of the sources of our water are going to be made bitter. And one-third of the rivers are going to be made bitter. Uh, a little note here is that when the fourth angel sounded... Oh, I'm sorry. This is the next part. Hold on, verse 12. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars... So as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. So it's saying for a third part of the day and a third part of the night, you're not going to see a third of the stars, moon, and sun. This is the fourth angel. Now, a, a little coincidence here is that on the fourth day, Jehovah God created the sun, the moon, and the stars. Here at the very end, the fourth angel is going to darken them. The fourth trumpet. So there are some people that say that uh, in the previous verse this uh, large star falls to earth and smites the waters. There are some people say that the third part of the sun was smitten, the third part of the moon, the third part of the stars, that, that you know the third part of the day is gone. They're saying it's a 16-hour day because of Wormwood's size. It hits the Earth and speeds the rotation of the Earth where we have a 16-hour day. I, I don't believe that's the case. Uh, that's The day is not short. It says the, they were blotted out. So my guess is whatever hits the Earth causes uh, uh, particulates in the air to, to, to block out this light from our sun, our moon, and our stars. Verse 13, And I beheld, and I heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, <laughs> to the inhabitants of the earth, by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound. Uh-oh. These next three trumpets are going to be bad. So, that concludes this study. I'm looking forward to doing the last three trumpets, which are going to be bad. And uh, I guess we'll see y'all then. So, thank you very much. And have a blessed, blessed day.